Please join me in welcoming Jake Thompson. Good morning, my name is Jake Thompson. I'm a senior psychometrician at Accessible Teaching, Learning, and Assessment Systems at the University of Kansas. And there I work with K-12 assessment data. So taking um, student test results, turning them into scores, and then the final step is writing technical documentation to support the use of those assessments and the scores. Um, so that's what I wanna talk about today is a workflow um, that we've developed for doing these reports in our markdown. Um, so before we get too far into it, I do want to um, acknowledge two of my colleagues, Noel Pablo and Jeff Hoover, um, who've contributed a lot to the work, um, both on the package um, and just thinking about this workflow. Um, and so Noel is here today, um, so if you see her, be sure to say hi. Jeff was not able to make it. Um, so I probably don't need to sell this crowd on our markdown too much, but I do think it's worth repeating why we wanted to use our markdown for these reports. Um, the first reason is that our markdown reports are reproducible, um, and I mean that both within and across years. Um, so if we have an analysis um, and someone says, where did this number come from? Because we have the code, um, it's easy for us to say exactly um, where that analysis happened and how we got those results. But then it's also reproducible across years. So if you think about um, educational assessment, students test every single year, um, which means we have to redo those reports every year with the updated data. And so by using our markdown, we can just drop in the new data files and then get the updated report for that year. So it ends up saving us a lot of time. Um, secondly, these reports are dynamic. So I think we've all probably experienced um, an email that says, oh no, we have an updated data file. The one you used is wrong. Um, but by using our markdown, we can just drop in that new data file and get corrected results really quickly. Um, and the other reason is that we can get multiple output formats with our markdown. So we can write reports out to Microsoft Word or um, PDF if we're using LaTeX, or you can even make um, flash text board um, or some slides or a website. Um, so the problem that we faced um, was that the uh, default um, look of markdown reports that you see over here on the left um, does not really match what our normal reports look like on the right. And so often, organizations, um, Atlas included, have specific branding. So we say, if we're gonna make a report, um, this is what it needs to look like. So in order for us to use our markdown um, for our technical reports, we had to make sure that it matched our brand guidelines. Um, and so today what I wanna talk about is how we went about uh, making these branded reports in a reproducible and scalable way. So the first step um, is to find your brand. Um, and that can mean many things. Um, some organizations have um, a style guide or brand guidelines that'll specify um, what fonts you're supposed to use, the colors, um, spacing of the margin. So anything that is like really annoying and gives you a headache if you have to look at it for too long, um, that's probably what's in the brand guidelines. Um, if you don't have that, you might have a marketing team who puts together your reports for um, final distribution, um, or you might even just have an editing team. So if you have someone who edits your final reports right before they go out, um, they are probably doing the little editing stuff so you don't have to. Um, so you find them and that will help you um, figure out what your final result needs to look like. Um, step two is to then build your template, um, which is obviously not that easy. It's um, an iterative process that we're gonna talk a little bit more about. Um, so basically you'll start a template, you'll render your document, realize it's not exactly what you wanted, make some tweaks, re-render, um, and so on and so forth until you get to that final version that you want. And so today we're gonna talk about um, how to do this with a Microsoft Word template, because I think it's the most straightforward, um, but you could do this with any type of R Markdown output. Um, so I think the easiest way to do this with Microsoft Word is just to start writing your document in R Markdown. Um, so you can start it just like you would um, any document, and then um, once you get a little bit into it, you can hit that knit button. And what you'll get is an output that looks like this. And so this is the default uh, Microsoft Word template if you don't specify any changes. Um, and again, this is um, nice, but not exactly what we want it to look like. Um, and so what you'll do is you can click your little cursor into some section of the document. So for example, if we were in the title, 
And then you'll click the Styles pane up top. And there you'll see exactly what style um, the default template has chosen for you. And so if we are in the title, it'll say that we are in the title style. And then if we hit this arrow, we can modify that style. And so when we modify, we can change the font that's being used, the color, the size, the spacing around the paragraph. Basically, anything that you want to change for that style, you can modify. And then once you've done that, you save that Word document, um, and that will be your template. And so I normally save it as template.docx, just to make it very clear what I'm doing. And then in your uh, Microsoft or in your R Markdown YAML header, you still specify that you want to use the Word document, but then you include this extra option that says reference docx equals template docx, so that template file that you just saved. And so now when you knit that R Markdown document, um, it's going to use all those styles that you defined when you were modifying those styles in your Word document. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can uh, modify styles in a Word document to do some really cool things. Um, so these are some resources that I found helpful when we were developing our Word templates. Um, so Daniel Hadley actually gave a talk at our studio comp a couple years ago um, called Branding and Automating with R Markdown, um, where he um, gives some really good advice about how to do this um, in Word and some different tricks about like how to get page breaks by using like a level six heading, I think. Um, there's also a post on the RStudio website um, from Richard Layton called Happy Collaboration with R Markdown um, to DocX. And then there's a chapter in um, R Markdown, the definitive guide um, about Word documents. Um, and all of these, um, if you download the slides, um, they are available at this um, address down here. Um, and I also, at that website, included um, links to all these resources as well, so hopefully they're easy to access. All right, so once we have our templates, um, you're not done. So your reports probably need a little bit of polishing. Um, so for example, if you're including um, figures, you might want your figures to also match your brand guidelines. So use the same fonts as your report, maybe have a color palette that matches your brand's colors. Um, and so there are some really good examples about how to do this. I'm not going to talk about um, ggplot themes and how to create them today. Um, that's kind of beyond the scope of what I want to talk about here. But um, I did include some packages that I think give some really good um, examples for how to do this. Um, so the HRBR themes package, um, and then also artistic and bbplot, um, I think do a really good job of um, creating custom themes. And then you also might want to think about um, setting some default knit or chunk options. Um, so if you think about how big you want your figures to be in your report, if they need to follow a certain aspect ratio, these are all things that you can define um, as defaults within your R Markdown document. Okay, so we have all of that. We have our templates, we have our ggplot themes. Um, the question is, what do you do with that? Um, one option that we um, tried for a little bit was just having things live on a network drive. Um, and that got really messy really quickly. Um, so every time you start a project, you're then copying the templates, the code for the ggplot themes, all that into every project. And then if there's an update, you then have to go copy that into all the projects to make sure everything's using the most recent version of the template. Um, and it gets really messy, and no one's sure if they're using the correct version of things, and you have things called final and final underscore final two. Um, and so what we did was we made, um, we wrapped it into an R package. Um, and this ensures that if you have the most recent version of the R package, you're always using the correct version of the template. Um, it's easy to distribute if you host it on GitHub. Um, and finally, you can include documentation. So we have vignettes included that demonstrate to people who maybe don't use R Markdown that much exactly how to write a report with this, how to include figures, um, and any other thing like that. Um, so the package we created is called R Atlas or Ratlas. Um, and you can find um, the code for this at the um, link for the talk. Um, so if you want to use it as a template for your own organization, um, please feel free to adapt it and use however you see fit. Um, but this includes templates for different types of reports that we create. Um, as well as um, some convenient project templates, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, um, custom ggplot2 themes and vignettes for documentation. Um, so when you're creating this um, package, there are um, several directories that I think are important. We're going to talk about three of them. Um, two of them live in the ints directory, and that's the R markdown and R studio folders, and then the R directory. 
So the R Markdown directory um, is basically just where your templates are going to live. Um, so we have the ints directory, R Markdown, we define that we're making templates, and then for the Rattlist package, we have two types of reports that we make generally. We have topic guides and we have tech reports. Um, and so inside the topic guide, we have resources and the template docx, because those go out as Word documents. And then the tech reports um, get rendered as PDF documents, so we have a LaTeX template that gets used there. So this isn't anything that is um, super crazy. It's more just making sure that you have um, structured your folders in a way um, that makes sense to R and the functions that we're going to use to wrap it. Um, and so that is um, our wrapper functions that go in the R directory. Um, so ours is called render.r since we're rendering the documents. Um, and so this is the function that we use when we're creating um, a topic guide. So we have um, the only arguments that get passed in are the, uh, the dot, dot, dot arguments. Um, and the first thing we do is we um, just tell R what template we want to use. Um, so because we put that topic guide template in the inst directory, we can use the system file command to find that template. And then we just call um, our normal rendering function. So um, the default in an R markdown document is usually um, Word document if you're um, knitting to Word. Um, here we use the um, book down Word document 2 function because um, it has a bunch of other features and functionality um, that are useful for us. And we just tell it that we want to um, use the reference docx, we want to use that template, and then any other arguments that got passed um, get forwarded on to that book down function. And then this is also where we specify our default knitter chunk options. So here we've said that um, by default we don't want to show the code, we just want the um, text and the results to show, um, and we also set a default aspect ratio for our figures. Um, and so now you'll call that function in your YAML header, which we have an example of in just a couple slides. And so the last thing we um, tried to do was make it easy for people to use um, this package who maybe aren't as familiar with R, um, or may not be as familiar with R Markdown. Um, and so with our studio, you can make project templates. Um, and so if you don't use projects, um, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great way to keep um, your work organized. But in the project template, um, it also lives inside the inst directory, inside um, in our studio folder. Again, we're making a project template. And there are two um, important things. There's the topic guide um, .dcf, um, which is going to specify the name of your template and what files you want to open and then also the resources for that, um, so what is going to be used. And so now, if you go into RStudio and click, um, I want to create a new project, um, you can click the new directory, um, and now your project template will live in this little nice GUI for users to click on. And so here we can click, we want a topic guide using Ratlist, um, and it will automatically um, create your project for you, and it'll open this index file the index RMD file that um, we've created. So this is the template RMD file that automatically gets opened when you create that new project. And so it has um, the YAML filled out. You can see here that we've specified the output type as um, Ratlist Topic Guide X. So that's the rendering function that we just made. Um, and then it has like some default bibliography settings. And it also includes um, a setup chunk that loads some functions. And basically what we're trying to do is just make it as easy as possible for someone who's not as familiar with R to access this workflow. Um, so they can just click new project, have the document opened up, and start writing and not have to worry about defining the templates correctly, loading in all this extra ggplot2 theme code, and things like that. Um, so uh, Rattlus is definitely not the only example of this happening. There are many other examples um, that we found very useful when uh, putting our package together that I think are um, good resources for you if you're thinking about making a package for your own organization. Um, so the Sorensen Impact package, um, I mentioned earlier, um, Daniel Hadley gave a talk a couple years ago um, that was very similar to this one, and they use um, the Sorensen Impact package. Um, there's also the Thesis Down package um, that does um, theses, uh, a LaTeX template for theses at Reed College um, by Chester Ismay. 
And um, if you go to this repo in the readme, there's a link to about like 50 other packages that have forked thesis down for their own colleges or universities. Um, so that's a really good place if you want to see how to take an existing package and kind of modify it to meet your own needs. Um, I'd really recommend going and looking at that work. And then also the articles package wraps a bunch of different LaTeX templates for rendering um, our markdown documents to different journal specifications. All right. And so thank you. A few minutes for questions, and I see there's already a few on Slido, so I'm going to start here. The first one was, can you get the CSS out of a Word document template and then use it for PDF or HTML outputs? Um, so that's not anything that I'm familiar with. Um, I think if you want to go to CSS or HTML, it's probably better to use one of those rendering functions or look into the page down. Um, package, which will define, um, you can use CSS to define um, PDF output that way. Another question on Slido was how do you include logos? Yeah, so um, in your R Markdown document, there's a function in the knitter package called include graphics. Um, and so if you have your logo in your project directory, um, you can just say include graphics um, and then the path to that figure and it'll drop it in right for you. Yeah, great question. Great. Um, there's a, quite a few coming in. We have a few more minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and ask. Can you knit PDFs using your uh, docx templates? Uh, no, you have to have a LaTeX template if you're going to knit to a PDF. OK. Yeah. Um, do you have any concerns with using an R Markdown document as a requirements document? For example, using it for communicating model recs and writing test cases? Um, I don't, I personally use R Markdown for everything because I think it's um, reproducible. <laughs> you can see exactly um, what you did in terms of code. So I, I mean, I would prefer that to a Word document. Um, so I'm probably biased and maybe not the best person to ask, but I don't have any problems using R Markdown. Okay. And uh, so there's two questions left since we have a few minutes. How are you hosting and sharing these docs? Um, so all of our documents get hosted um, on the company website. Um, so um, most of my reports that I write are in support of the Dynamic Learning Maps assessment. So if you go to dynamiclearningmaps.org, there is a research publications page where you can see all the different reports that we've written. Yeah. Um, so last question is, what challenges did you encounter in the adoption of these templates? Um, so the biggest challenge um, was the first one before we had the package and there were all these different template versions running around and no one was sure which one to use. Um, so I really recommend writing an R package because uh, that is a really big headache. Um, beyond that, if you think about trying to share it to a broader company, I really think removing barriers for people who maybe don't use R as often. Um, so that's where those project templates I think can be really helpful if you can make it easy for someone who doesn't know R or R Markdown to just open up a document and start writing, um, it's a much easier ask to say, learn some R Markdown formatting, like use double asterisks for bold, as opposed to learn how to use R. Like that's a much tougher ask that people are going to give you some more pushback on. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you.